Hi everybody and welcome to this App Inventor introduction tutorial. In this tutorial we will create a very simple application and we will use this application and the process of creating the application in order to help us demonstrate some of the concept of App Inventor such as the screen layout, some basic components, the concept of properties, events and methods. This application will be a very simple calculator and the first thing that we need when we create an application is a user interface. So our user interface will need a couple of text boxes, label and a button. We will start by dragging the blocks, the components from this palette to the viewer. As we drag them to the viewer, we will see them updated on the emulator. If you have the real phone connected to your computer with a USB cable, you will see the changes on the phone. So we will start by uh, dragging two text boxes, a button, and a label. When we highlight uh, each of the components, we see on the right side a list of properties that are relevant for this particular component. So for example, when we highlight the button, we can change a number of properties that are related to the button. For example, we can change the color of the button from the default black to green, and we see that the button here is changed to green. We'll change it back to default, and so on for uh, the rest of the properties here. For example, enabled, if it's not enabled, then the button is not clickable, and if the font bold is checked, then the script on the button turns into bold and the same goes for the font size and the other properties of this element. This also goes for the text on the button. If we want to have a different text, we should change the text property. So for example, for the calculator, we need the text to be calculate. The other blocks also have some properties and the list of properties is different from one block to another. So for example, in text box, we will have hint. Hint is the gray text that we see by default before we entered any text. So we will change this hint to be something meaningful for calculator, let's say operand 1. The second text box will have the hint operand 2. Now this is up to you what to put here. It makes no difference for the functionality of the application but it makes it easier for the users to understand what is expected from them. The text on the label, we will change it to nothing as we want it to have no value when the application starts. Another thing that we need to pay attention to is the names of the components. The names of the components should be meaningful. So when you write the functionality behind the interface, you would be able to use meaningful names so it's easier to locate the components when you design the code as well as to allow easier maintenance later on. So we will change the text box 1 to be text operand 1. And the name of text box 2 will be text operand 2. The name of the button we will change it to button calculate. And the name of the label will be result. Once we have all the components ready, we can go to the editor and start making sense of it all. So if we want the calculator to present the sum of the two operands, so when the user enters a number here and a number here and presses the calculate button, we will be presented with the sum of the two operands. What we should do is go to my blocks and get the result label. Change the text of the result. Now the text is nothing, but we want to change the text of the result to be the sum of the text properties of the two operands. So we go to the built-in blocks and we go to math. All the mathematical functions are here. And we take the block that is the sum of two numbers and we match it in here and it clicks. If, it, if it's not meant to be here, well, you will get an error message. So you shouldn't really be concerned about making mistakes here because you get an immediate feedback if what, we, what you did is, is working or not. And now we should put the two values in here. So we go to my blocks again and we take the value of operand one, which is the text. 
and we add the value of operand2, which is the text operand2 text, like so. So now we have the text for the result label, which is the sum of the two operands. But we want the label to present it only when we hit the calculate button. So we go to the button block and we use the click event for the button block. We take it here and we match this inside. So now we have this block that what it's saying is that when the calculate button is clicked, when the click event is happening, it should take the two values, the two texts inside the the text fields, add them up and present them in the text property of the result, of the label result. Now we can try it, we will hit the calculate and it gives us the result, the sum. There are many mathematical operations that we can do between the two numbers. For example, we can change it instead of sum, we can change it to multiply. So we'll take the operand 1 and we'll multiply it by operand 2. And we match this inside. And as you can see, I leave this uh, component, this block, just floating here without any anything attached to it. That's OK. I can discard it, but I can leave it here. So now it, when I hit calculate, I expect to see 2 times 3 in the result. And sure enough, we see 6. Other operations I can do is some other mathematic operations, such as square root of one of the operands and the minimum of the two operands. So for example, let's demonstrate this one. So if I put this one and put the text of the first one and the text of the second one, and I can add on and on here, then if I hit calculate, it will give it, it will check the two operands here, or as many as I have, and will present only the one with the lesser value. So now it should return eight. And it doesn't matter if, if it's the first one or the second one, it will choose the lowest one. So if I change this one to one, it will give us one in the result. The other operations, some of them are just tests to see if a statement is true or false. So for example, if we use the lesser than with the two operands, it will give us true or false. So now we tell the application to check if operand 1, if the text in operand 1 is lesser than the text in operand 2. Now it should give us false as operand 1 is 8 and operand 2 is 1 and operand 1 is not lesser than operand 2. So if we hit calculate, it gives us false. If we change the order of the two operands and we tell the application to check if operand 2 is lesser than operand 1, it will give us true as it is a true statement. There are many other mathematical uh, options here. We can get the absolute value of one of the operands. So no matter what, if we put a number that is smaller than zero here, for example, minus 70, it will give us 70. As this is the absolute value of minus 70. If we enter 70 here without the minus, it will also give us 70. The absolute function always returns the positive reflection of what it gets as an argument. There are many mathematical functions here and we don't really have to explain each and every one of them. It's all in the documentation, very clear. And there is a link in the description of this video where you can check everything out. And the best thing will be to explore them by using them and see what happens. Two of the functions I do want to talk about are the random functions. So this one returns a random integer. And this one returns a random fraction. So, for example, if we put this one, it will return a random integer between 1 and 100 inclusive. So if we hit calculate, it will give us different numbers 
every time we click between 1 and 100. But we can change it to use our input as operand 1 and operand 2, and we can change it to be a number between 5 and 1. The order here doesn't really mean that operand 1 should be greater or smaller than the second operand. So now that we restricted the range to be between 5 and 1, when we hit calculate, it will give us numbers between 5 and 1 inclusive. Another function is random fraction, which get no arguments. It will always return a fraction, which is a number between 0 and 1. And this is the result. The random numbers are important when we need to generate random numbers, of course. And this is useful when we need to generate random passwords, or flip a coin, or make a completely random decision. So this is the click event. There are other events related to the button, and there are other events related to other components. For example, other events will be get focus and lost focus on the button. And to use them, we need to use this block and this block. We'll demonstrate these two events with another uh, component with the text box. So we'll go to text box one. We'll take the get focus and text box one, the lost focus. And we will add blocks so when we get and lost focus, it will change the component's background color. So, for example, when we get focus, let's change the background color to red. We'll, get, we'll take the operand 1 background color, and we'll put it here and here. And when it gets focus, let's change it to red. And when it loses focus, we'll change it to green. So now, if we click on operand 1 text box, it will be red. And when we click elsewhere, it will turn green. And with these two events, we can change other properties of this text box or any other component, such as the text color, and any other property of the element. Now, since those two events are linked to operand one text box, if we want to do it on the other text box, we need to duplicate the whole structure here, just use events that are linked to operand two, and change the value of an attribute which is linked to operand two. Another thing I should emphasize about this little exercise is that we assume that the user is always entering valid values here, valid input. So the calculation will result with something meaningful. But if the user tries to do something funny, for example entering letters here and not numbers, it will give us some unexpected results. So let's put the some operation here and we'll try to put it with values that make no sense. So for example let's tell the application to add 5 and the letter G and see what happens. We get an error message because 5 and G won't add up. So a good application should consider all the unexpected input that the user might enter and handle it. We will discuss validation in another tutorial, but for now we just need to keep in mind that such consideration is needed. And that's all for this tutorial. You are welcome to post your questions in the discussion forum, and see you on the next one.